Manchester, England was hit Monday evening by a suicide bombing at the entrance of a concert headlined by American pop artist Ariana Grande. At this time, it is believed 22 people, including an eight-year-old child, were killed and over 100 injured. We still don't know the why, though. As, though, as with most acts of extremism, at least one terrorist group has claimed responsibility, and it didn't take long for many online and in the news media to make the act an issue of immigration and refugee policy as they stoked the fires of Islamophobia and fomented more, more fear and hate into the landscape. But Mancunians showed the world, extremists and innocents alike, that they will not ever bend a knee to terror. One Twitter user, Joshua Wood, stated in response to the extremist reactions to the extremist act, Muslims are to blame? When in reality, Muslim taxi drivers were offering free lifts and a Muslim doctor working into the night saving lives. That's right, Manchester and Liverpool's cab companies and drivers immediately descended on the area to give free rides to anyone in need as the local trains had been shut down after the blast. Granada Reports journalist Adam McLean tweeted about the free taxis and that he had heard so many stories of people reaching out to help. Sikh temples in Manchester offered food and accommodations to anyone stranded or scared. Local Mancunians even started a hashtag, Rooms for Manchester, and spent the evening offering up their own homes and even rides to children and families. Manchester was the shining beacon. They not only handled the attack professionally, but reacted to it with one thing that will always combat hate, love, care, and community, a true community. Mayor of Greater Manchester, Andy Burnham, had asked this of Mancunians and the world at large. And for goodness sake, let's not uh, descend into a situation of mutual distrust between, uh, between our uh, communities. You know, the individual uh, who, who carried this out uh, is an extremist and doesn't represent any of our, any of our communities, does not represent uh, the people of Greater Manchester in any way, shape or form. And I think it's very important that that message is, is heard. You know, I think that's the important thing. I, I really, you know, that's a good message that the mayor had, and I think it was good to focus on the pot, you know, on it, taking the, the, the tragedy of this and then focusing on how people were, you know, turned that tragedy, you know, into a sense of love and caring for the yeah. community, into that sense of, you know what, we're all going to come together and try to help mm -hmm. anybody who's suffering or injured. I, I wish that, that we would see that out of the media more often. I wish that they would not just cover on, you know, oh, this person lost somebody. Of course, that's, that's tragic. And, and, and that's important. But let's also look at the good that can come out of these situations. Mm -hmm. And let's try to build on that because ultimately, like you said, I, I agree with you, Tab, you know, it, it, hate doesn't make hate go away. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we... <laughs> that's <laughs> we, the ridiculous. You can round up everyone you think is, is hateful or you think doesn't follow your values. You can round them all up. It's not going to change it. No. It's not going to change what's going on there. And in Manchester, what we saw was... That's a real community, and they've been through yeah. it. They've been through these sort of things before, and I think part of it is because Manchester is it has always been this sort of industrial, mm. working class neighborhood. These aren't you know posh Londoners. <laughs> these are these are your working class. This is like a you yeah. know midwestern city where I grew up. They, they believe in a community. It doesn't matter where you're from. Yeah, those things just don't matter when it comes down to it. You help. You know, and, and one of the things that was interesting is, is you know, you could look at, like, local, I mean, you talk about a community coming out to help people. Local blood banks had to ask people to stop coming in without an appointment because they had so many volunteers. In fact, Jane Green, Chief Nurse and Assistant Director of Operations at NHS Blood and Transplant, praised the actions of the donors and asked them to think on one very important thing. Let's listen to what Ms. Green said. I think that what we need now is for all of those people that tried to come in to donate today to remember what brought them to our doors to remember that that there was something that sparked them into either remembering that they were a donor or that they should do this because it's a good thing and that's the thing Tabitha you know it shouldn't I, I, I always hate it that it has to take true tragedy mm -hmm. for us to come together and suddenly remember that hey we got to be good people in this world hey you know donating blood's a good thing or, or helping out my neighbor or giving someone a free ride it shouldn't just be dependent on tragedy it's amazing when you see it happen during a tragedy but that should be an everyday thing right and you that know? was the thing you know in in new york on 9 11 that was the thing that that was for me as someone who just moved to the city a few years before when everything happened 
people were there. Mm. We were there. We were, it, it just, it was a community. You said hi to it. it, it suddenly you realize you come together. And in Manchester especially, this isn't the first time they've ever had to deal with something yeah. like this. Uh, it was actually 1996. Manchester was hit by the worst bombing, it still is, in the UK since World War II. Uh, at the time, the provisional Irish Republican Army, the IRA, attacked a city center with a 33 100 pound truck bomb that injured 200 and caused nearly 1.2 billion dollars in damage. Now there were no fatalities in that bombing because the IRA reportedly called in a warning 90 minutes before so that the bomb went off so 75,000 people were able to be evacuated from the blast. They know how to handle this. They know yeah. how to move forward. They it, in that instance they came together in this one they came together I mean it was it was incredible to see how quickly watching Twitter how quickly people were helping or offering up their yep. homes doing all that and yet how quickly people were were going online to troll oh. that you know teenagers and trolls were literally putting up fake picture pictures of people they said were missing mm. and, and sort of making this whole thing and I just and then it's of course you always have the you know liberals are it's liberals fault that yeah. this is happening it's this person's happening. to me anybody who who tries to politically profit from a tragedy like this is just as bad as a terrorist. Oh, You're no better. I agree. And, and let's not forget that, that, you know, the tragedy of losing those people there and we mourn for them. But let's also remember that there's also tragedies going on around the world that mm. also need our attention and caring. Yemen and other places like right. that. You know, there, it, it's not just, <laughs> I'm going to be honest, it's not just when white people die that suddenly it's a tragedy. Right. And, and that's the thing about this specifically. I yeah. think we really need to look at the Manchester community as that shining yes. beacon. Just our hearts go out yeah. to you and, and to everyone there, but mm. you guys, you guys showed the world how strong you were and how strong we should all be. Definitely. All right, as we go to break, Hawk Watchers, don't forget to let us know what you think of the topics we've covered on Facebook and Twitter. See our full shows at RT.com. Coming up, Sean Stone discusses a new style of crime <laughs> to hit Las Vegas with investigative journalist Janet Thielen. Then RT's Brigitte Santos unveils yet another new malware using NSA-developed exploits. Stay tuned to Watching the Hawks.